Hello Booktube. Um, today we're going to do the fourth shelf of the first bookshelf. Right here. We're going to start with a set. Um, this is Will and eventually Will and Ariel Durant's great story of civilization. Um, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven volumes. Um, I have them without the dust jackets. I've had them for years. Um, this one here is the, our Oriental Heritage. Let's flip that around so you can see it. And papers and the map. In this case, in the Near East and Egypt. Um, Story of, of Civilization Part 1, Our Oriental Heritage being a history of civilization in Egypt and the Near East to the death of Alexander, and in India, China, and Japan from the beginning to our own day, with an introduction on the nature and foundation of civilization by Will Durant, Simon & Schuster, New York, 1954. Um, so, um, I, I go through these. I've read probably as far as the Age of Faith, a little bit of uh, Renaissance volume. This was a massive undertaking by the Durants. Um, I think I got my set as part of a uh, Book of the Month Club subscription or something along those lines. They are illustrated. Instead of going through in each volume, because they all look the same, I mean, I could show you different images, but um, Volume 1 is Our Oriental Heritage, Volume 2 The Life of Greece, Volume 3 is Caesar and Christ, Volume 4 is The Age of Faith, Volume 5 is The Renaissance, Volume 6 is The Reformation, Volume 7 is The Age of Reason Begins, Volume 8 The Age of Louis XIV. Volume 9, The Age of Voltaire, Volume 10, Rousseau and Revolution, Volume 11, The Age of Napoleon. So, um, we also, um, I, and I don't have it anymore, Will Durant wrote a book called The Story of Philosophy that was just one of those early volumes that got me into philosophy. So that, that's that first set. Now, the second partial set is something where I said I'd do a comparison when I did the first video. The Harvard Classics, um, I've had full sets in the past. Um, I don't have a full set now. Um, I had a, a red a set that has red covers. Um, but wasn't these ones I'm going to show you now. So I've got I've got two of these older editions. I'd like to show them to you compared to. I got I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of what they call the deluxe edition. That's a pretty enough book. Um, so this particular volume is uh, Edmund Burke. And it includes On Taste, On the Sublime and Beautiful, Reflections on the French Revolution, and A Letter to a Noble Lord. It's P.F. Collier and Son Corporation, New York. Uh, copyright Originals, 1909. This is, uh, says 1937. This is, this, I don't believe this from 37 but I don't, I don't know how they do there I would be skeptical that this is from 1937 but maybe, maybe I'm wrong so anyway so I have Edmund Burke Chaucer to Gray so these are uh, English poetry in three volumes uh, from Chaucer to Gray with an introduction and notes. 
there's the bird. That was Trasher the Grey. English Poetry in Three Volumes, Volume 2, from Collins to Fitzgerald. Image of Psyche. Let's see if I get these out of order. Yes, I do. English Poetry in Three Volumes, Volume 3, from Tennyson to Whitman. And this is the Lady of Shalott. On the... So those are the three English poetry. We also had the Edmund Burke. Now we have the volume that is uh, Essays, Civil and Moral, and The New Atlantis by Francis Bacon. Area Pagadita, I'm not even going to say it, and a tractate on education by John Milton, and Religio Medici by Sir Thomas Brown. This volume here, Franklin, Woman and Pen. So for, you have the Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, The Journal of John Woolman, and Fruits of Solitude by William Penn. There's an image of Franklin's printing press. Essays English and American. There's Thomas Huxley, Darwin's bulldog there, as he was known. So in this uh, volume, we have Jonathan Swift by William H. P. Thackeray. We have John Henry Newman's The Idea of a University. We have Matthew Arnold's The Study of Poetry. John Ruskin, who we looked at a folio edition of. This has his Sesame and Lilies. Uh, Walter Bagout does a piece on John Milton. Thomas Henry Huxley does Science and Culture. Edward Augustus Freeman does Race and Language. Robert Louis Stevenson does The Truth of Intercourse, Samuel Pepys. William Ellery Channing does On the Elevation of the Laboring Classes. Edgar Allan Poe does The Poetic Principle. Henry David Thoreau's Walking. And James Russell Lowell does Abraham Lincoln and Democracy. And then we have famous prefaces. There's a whole load of them, so I'm not going to read them all. So, Francis Bacon, uh, Preface to the Novum Organum. Uh, Hemming and Condell, uh, Preface to the First Folio Edition of Shakespeare's Plays. Uh, let's see something else here. Oh, William Wordsworth, Prefaces to Various Volumes of Poems. John Dryden, Preface to Fables, Ancient and Modern. That's not everything, but gives you an idea what sort of thing they have in there. And then finally, uh, Addison, Steele, Swift, Defoe, Johnson, and others. Uh, English Essays from Philip, uh, Sir Philip Sidney to Macaulay. And here's Samuel Johnson at the House of Lord Chesterfield for an image beside. So you, I guess my point is take a look at the illustrations. This is a deluxe edition, but compare it here to two volumes I've gotten from an older edition. This is a Harvey classic. Buckle, deckled edges. And papers are pretty straightforward. Paper, you know, automatically tell the minute you touch it. So killed it on the top there, it's pretty old. A protective sheet here. Look at this image. So, this Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot, Chronicle and Romance, Froissart, Mallory, and Hollingshead. 
Collier and Sons again. Let me see if I can get that in there. Copyright 1910. Let me see the contents. So let's see if I can find some images. So the description of the image will be on this little onion skin paper that protects. And I don't know if there's a, yeah, you see it on there. And then there's the image that's under it. So in this case, the image is the charge of the French knights against the English bowmen at the Battle of Crecy. Uh, from the painting by Woodville. Um, yeah, the, the, the paper, the, they don't even feel the same. Now here is an image of an example of manuscript illustration. It's called Embarking for the Crusades. It's a manuscript of the 14th century in the Museum of the Louvre in Paris. So There is nothing like this in the deluxe edition. Something, huh? Um, so, uh, quite excited when I found this. Also, the pages have now been cut. Well, I haven't been cut all the way through, so you can pretty much get an idea of how far the original owner got in it. Um, this is from Hollingshead's Chronicle. Um, anyhow, so that's one of the volumes. The other one. I'd love to have the complete set of those. So if I see them, I'd pick them up, then, obviously. This, this one is, um, excuse me, <coughs> Emerson's... Essays in English Traits. So there's Ralph Waldo Emerson. Title page. Copyright 1909. Again, it's a little dusty. You can see the gold deck of edges. Uh, I wouldn't think this one would have as any illustrations that were too exciting. It starts off with the uh, famous essay, The American Scholar. Uh, well, here it is uh, Emerson's Library at Concord from a painting by Mrs. E.W. Roberts, photo graver by Gilbo. So anyway, that was a comparison of the deluxe edition and these two wonderful volumes. Um, thank you, BookTube.